So let's take a look at a view of diff the different types of telescopes, and there are many different designs over the years. The earliest telescope was what was called a refractor, which is the kind of telescope that when you read about Galileo pointing his telescope at the stars and discovering the moons of Jupiter and things like that, this is he was using a refractor. A refractor consists of an objective lens and an eyepiece, and basically the light comes in, is uh, focused by the objective lens, then it spreads apart again and is refocused by the eyepiece, and the combination of the two produces a magnification, just like a microscope, only the uh, uh, the difference is that uh, in a telescope, the objective lens is the really the determining factor in terms of the amount of light it'll gather, and the eyepiece is the determining factor in terms of how sharp uh, the image will be, what its uh, field of view will be, and so on. The first telescope I ever owned, which was a very, very inexpensive telescope that I got when I was nine years old, was a refractor. It consisted of a, a few cardboard tubes and two lenses, and I thought I was in heaven. Over the years, of course, I have upgraded to better, bigger and better telescopes, but uh, one of the first improvements, now refractors are still quite good telescopes, but if you want to build a, a very large telescope, the problem not only in producing the objective lens but also in holding it and the weight and everything really gets out of hand after you get up above about a 40 or so inch objective mirror lens. But you can build reflectors and, and Isaac Newton is one of the people who developed this. It's called the Newtonian, but he wasn't actually the one who came up with the design. He just popularized it under his name. But this is what's called a Newtonian telescope. It has an, a mirror at the end instead of an objective lens. The light comes in, strikes the curved mirror, then it is focused, or, or at least is brought together onto a a mirror, and then the mirror reflects that light up through a tube where the eyepiece is located. And we'll look at one of these a little later. We're not going to look at refractors. Uh, I don't have a very good refractor at this time, but we will look at at least one Newtonian. And then finally, a lot of modern telescopes are based on various designs that uh, have names like Smith Cassegrain or uh, Maxitov Cassegrain or Smith Maxitov and so on. These are different developers who discovered that if you put a corrector lens at the front of what would ordinarily be a Newtonian, and then if on that corrector lens you placed a reflective mirror, the light will come in, be corrected by the corrector, be reflected by a mirror at the bottom, which by the way has a hole in the middle. That reflected light is then concentrated on the uh, mirror at the, on the back of the corrector lens and reflected down the middle through the hole and out to the eyepiece. In this case, the eyepiece has a diagonal. This isn't necessary. The eyepiece could come straight out here, and we'll look at that perhaps later. The Smith cast grain has become very popular because you can get a, a fairly long focal length wide aperture uh, telescope by folding the, the optical tube, in effect, so that, for example, a couple of the smith cassegrains we will look at are have 2,000 millimeter focal lengths, or a little more, and yet they're only a little over a foot long. So uh, 
We will look at a couple of these. Uh, if you saw the introduction to this, you know that the uh, the basic Mead design and the Celestron design are Schmidt Cassegrains. This is the Mead DS2114. It has a 114 millimeter objective uh, mirror or primary mirror. If you look down in there, you see the reflection down inside at the very bottom. And up here, you see the reflection mirror. Uh, the image is uh, focused on the corrective mirror down there. Comes up to this mirror where it is deflected to the side into this where a, an eyepiece is fitted. And then of course this is the focus adjustment. Now the uh, this is an example of a Newtonian telescope, and I have owned many, well, I shouldn't say many, several Newtonian telescopes. They are excellent uh, instruments. But one problem is, as, you, uh, as the mirror gets larger and the length of the tube gets uh, bigger and longer, uh, there is, you do reach a point where they are hard to drive using go-to mechanisms. And this particular telescope does have a go-to. I'll uh, show you the controller down here. And what that means is that it has a, uh, a computer built into the controller, which is attached here. When you turn this on, it'll run either on batteries or on power supply. I use a power supply that I built. Uh, well, I say built, I adapted so that I don't have to replace the batteries all the time. But the advantage of a, one of this kind of scope is that it, uh, once you have it aligned with the night sky, which is fairly simple to do, you just enter the object you want to look at and the telescope slews to that position and uh, stops. And sometimes you have to center it a little bit in the eyepiece, but uh, generally it's pretty close. So they're very, uh, they're fun to use. And unlike the, the Mead LX10 that you see there, the, uh, which does not have a go-to mechanism, and we'll talk about that one in just a second, and maybe even do a whole video on the LX10. The difference with that one is, that is what a lot of people call a push-to telescope, <laughs> because the, there is a motor that drives the, uh, the what is called the uh, right ascension of the uh, of the telescope to keep up with the sky as it, or actually as the Earth rotates, the sky appears to move. But it does not have go-to capability. In other words, you have to center the object you want to look at, and then the, the uh, motor will take over and keep that object in the center, or fairly close. So th that is the LX-10. The, the next one, that I wanted to talk about is this telescope. Let me turn it around here a little bit. It's kind of hard to do one-handed, but I'll rotate it a little bit. This is the Mead ETX. It's a very nice little portable scope. It will, it can detach. I bought a, a tripod uh, mount for it. This is just a, a sturdy uh, camera tripod. It also has a go-to capability, and it's a very, very nice scope for, for traveling because it, it packs uh, very small and, and fairly light. Once again, it will run on batteries, but once again, as I did with the other one, I have uh, made up my own uh, power connector which uh, I've also uh, done for the LX-10. The reason is that, frankly, if you're out for a while, 
uh, your batteries will, will run out after a few hours. So I do recommend the, uh, that you use a power supply. So if you're gonna order a telescope, look and see what a power supply is. It's gonna cost a little more if you get one from the manufacturer, but you'll find that uh, it more than pays for itself with your uh, ability to run all night. And by the way, you can plug these power supplies into an inverter and run them off your car battery. So if you're out in the middle of nowhere, but you're near your car, you can also run them that way. And then if you're even further away than that, you can put batteries in it, but you'll only get three or four hours use out of a set of AA batteries. The last one that I mentioned is this Celestron 8SE. And I got this because I discovered that these days, if you want a very nice telescope, it better have go-to capability or young folk really aren't too interested. The old push twos just, uh, just won't hack it in the day of uh, smartphones and internet and so on. So I'm gonna do a complete video, maybe two or three on this uh, Celestron 8SE at some point. But for right now, I think I'm going to close this section out on an overview of telescopes and uh, promise that we will get to things like eyepieces and filters and software and so on in future episodes. But in the meantime, have a nice day.